Hi everyone, I'm Ethan. The day I graduated high school, my dad told me he needed to talk to me. He said, are you planning to keep living in this house? I told him I had nowhere else to go. I've been taking care of you for years. You need to start working if you want to stay in this house. You either start bringing in some money or find yourself another place to live. I graduated from high school with a high GPA. I wanted to go to college to be able to get a good job later. My family is not doing well financially. I obviously know this, so I was thinking, I'll get a part-time job and I won't be a burden to them. But working part-time meant I could only cover my own expenses. There was no way I could bring in enough money to make my dad happy. So I had to drop out of college. A friend's father owned a moving company. I started working there. They specialized in moving furniture from luxury homes. All of our clients were rich families. Since the furniture was really valuable, we were packing and carrying it very carefully. It was a really stressful job. I had to be super careful all the time. If I were to cause the slightest damage, I would have to work for months without pay. Like my mom, I was giving all the money I was making to my dad. But our financial situation had not changed. We could never pay the rent on time. It was all my dad's fault. He was spending a lot of money on himself. As soon as I started working, he bought himself a better car. My mom had been complaining about him blowing through money for years. But my dad would just get angry. We couldn't say anything because we were scared of him. One day, we were helping a wealthy client move as usual. The lady who owned the house called me over. We went down to the basement together. She showed me a few pieces of furniture. Pack these up and take them to the truck. The rest is garbage. You can put it all in the trash, she said. First, I carried the items the lady showed me to the truck. Then I started filling up a big bag with the things I was supposed to discard. I came across a roll of paper. Just as I was about to throw it out, I got curious and unrolled it. It was a charcoal drawing. It was simple, but very pretty. I couldn't just throw it away. I went up to the lady. This is beautiful. Do you really want us to throw it out? I said. She took a look at the drawing. My grandfather loved art. It must be his. You're right. Throwing it away would be disrespectful to his memory, she said. She rolled up the drawing and put it in her bag. My phone rang while I was at another house a few weeks later. It was my boss. A client wants to see you. She's in our office now. Can you come over? He said. I was really scared. Was something lost during a move? Or did we damage some furniture? I thought about all the bad things that could have happened until I got to the office. I stepped into the boss's office. The lady who'd been waiting for me got up with a big <laughs> smile on her face. You remember that drawing you brought me instead of throwing it away? It turned out to be a portrait of my grandfather, and it was made by Picasso. They met in a bar in Madrid. Picasso really liked my grandfather and wanted to give him a gift. He asked the waiter for a pen and paper and drew his portrait. We obviously didn't want to sell it because of its sentimental value. However, my husband and I decided to give you a small reward. If it hadn't been for you, this drawing would have ended up in the trash, she said. Then she handed me an envelope. I looked at my boss. I'm proud of you, Ethan, he said with a smile. I was a little embarrassed but took the envelope from her. I left the office and sat on a bench outside. I wanted to know what was inside the envelope. I opened it. There was a check. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the amount on it. It was almost five times my annual salary. I thought of my dad right away, and of course my joy quickly turned into sadness. If I gave this money to him, he would spend it all on himself and not on our family. Both my mom and I had been stunned when we saw a gold chain around his neck one day. It was preposterous of him to spend money on something like that when we were having trouble paying our bills. Put yourself in my shoes. If you had such a father and came into some money, would you give it to him? One of my best friends, Travis, is studying economics in college. I gave him a call. I told him I had some money and asked him how to invest it. He's smart as a whip. You called me at the right time. I've been trading tech stocks for a while. It's going really well. If you want, I can do that for you as well, but I have to tell you it's quite risky. There's no middle ground in the stock market. You either lose big 
or win big, he said. I trusted him. And anyway, that money had fallen into my lap. I'm going to give you half. The rest will be enough for me to live on, I told him. But unfortunately, things didn't go as well as Travis expected. He quickly burned through the money I gave him. He kept calling me to apologize. I didn't even understand why we were losing because I didn't know the first thing about the stock market. But as I said, I trusted Travis. I gave him the rest of my money as well. I got this money because I was lucky. Something tells me I will get lucky again, I said. <laughs> it turns out I was right. This time, Travis was constantly calling me to give me good news. We were both rich. You know what's really weird? I was getting cash from Travis since I didn't even have a bank account. But where would I keep all that cash? I thought about it for a while and finally decided to hide it in cardboard boxes in our attic. When I'd fill up a box, I'd get another one. My dad would totally lose it if he found out. Our attic was stuffed with money. So much so that I didn't even know how much money I had. One night, I decided to count all of it. It took me until the morning. As the sun came up, I realized I was a millionaire, and this was only a fraction of my total wealth. I quit my job the next day. I told my boss I had decided to go to college. But it wasn't true. I had begun to think I didn't even need a college education anymore. Every morning, I'd leave the house as if I were going to work and hang out with Travis or in a coffee shop. In the evening, I'd come back home as if returning from work. After a while, I bought myself a car just because the attic was too full and I had to get rid of some cash. I actually don't like sports cars very much, but I picked one of the most expensive sports cars so that I could make some room in the attic. There were still a lot of boxes. I bought a huge house to get rid of even more money and make space in the attic. And now I had a place to go during the day as well. You might be wondering why I didn't leave home, why I still continued to live with my family this whole time. I didn't want to leave my mom and my sister alone with my dad. I was sure he was going to treat them worse once I was gone. One evening, my dad said, Call your mother and sister. I want to talk to all of you. A few minutes later, we were all standing in front of him. I quit my job today. I've been working for years to keep this family going. I took care of you, but I'm tired now. From now on, I'm not going to work. You're going to look after me, he said with a smirk. Then he turned to my sister. Sheila, you're quitting school too. The free ride you've been getting in this house is over. Everyone has to bring in money, he said. Sheila burst into tears straight away. My mom couldn't keep silent. I've been working for years just like you. This is all nonsense. Won't you feel any shame loafing around the house while we toil away? She screamed. When my dad started getting mad and charging towards my mom, I took her by the arm and led her outside. Mom, don't be upset. I'll save both of you from this man. Give me some time, I said. My mom thanked me, thinking that I was saying these things just to comfort her. After everyone was asleep, I went up into the attic. I took a few photos when the place was filled to the brim with money. Then I spent all night moving the money to my new house. Actually, I should have done this earlier. I kept putting it off, thinking there was no rush. I came back the next morning. I parked my car in front of the house. I honked the horn. First, my mom and sister came out, then my dad. All three of them were staring at me and at the car. I asked my dad, do you know whose car this is? How should I know? I guess it's your boss's, he said. No, dad, this car is mine. I bought it with my own money, I said. My dad couldn't say anything. He was literally speechless. That morning, I'd gone to a print shop and had them print out the photo I took of the attic in poster size. I showed it to my dad. Does this place look familiar to you? I asked. Dad stuttered. Eh, is that our attic? Whose money is that? Just like this car, I earned all that myself, I said. My dad was stunned. I'm your father. That money is mine, too, he yelled. I started to laugh as he turned to walk back to the house. <laughs> he thought the money was still in the attic. The attic is empty now. I moved all of it to my own house last night, I said. As a last resort, my dad started buttering me up. You're my favorite child. I've always been good to you. I'm sure you love me, too. That kind of thing. But we both knew none of this was true.
It's been four months since this happened. Right now, I live with my mom and my sister. My dad calls one of us every single day. Of course, no one answers. To me, he texts, My dearest son, I love you so much. I miss you a lot. To my sister, he writes, My beautiful princess, you got me wrong. I'm gonna send you to college. He can't find us since he doesn't know where we live. I'm sure he is really mad at us, but he hides it well. Because all he can think about is the money he saw in that photo. He is so naive to think that he could fool me with his fake words of love. I'm so happy I left him without a penny and got out of that house. After all he's done to us. I think he more than deserves it.